Alright, how's it going everyone? You're watching China Connors Wi-Fi Battle video here. We're going to be doing the Indigo League of Legends this time around. I'm facing with King of Scrog, aka the Celadon City, uh, Celadon City Persons. And I am, of course, the Human Law City Samurais. I start out with Alkazam, IQ Master, going for Tonk. I actually put this move on Alakazam for this particular battle, just for the Sable guy here. But I do catch the Snorlax, which I guess is okay if you want to go for Curse. I can't let him do that now because he's taunted. That means that he's forced to go for a Crunch. I go for Pursuit here. I know he's going to probably switch out and go back into his Dead Stitch. The Sable guy. I know that's a funny word. Dead Stitch. That's perfect for a Sable guy. But, I know that Sylveon could not be bothered by the will wisp Yes, it will do a little bit of chip damage and get rid of my leftover recovery, but still, that kind of nullifies my ability to, you know, just uh, use attacks. So that means that moves like Moonblast won't do very much. That's all I'm saying. Now, I make a mistake. I know that Snorlax is going to come in because I know that he knows that Sodion is more of a specially defensive wall. I should have gone for a Reflect. But I do end up going for that move, so that's fine. I really should have just gone for a Moonblast instead of going for a Toxic because it is apparent that his Jirachi might be switching in. At the time of this battle, guys, I know that Jirachi could go for Stealth Rock, which would be a pain in the butt, but it actually is Choice Scarf, I think it was. But we later figure out that it's actually Scarf the entire Wi-Fi battle that I'm having here with you guys. I'm showing you. Because this was an epic battle, just saying. Now, why would I go for a Will-O-Wisp on the dead stitch when he has talked. So we go for a Shadow Sneak instead. That's great. And I go back into Sylveon because I know another Will-O-Wisp might be coming my way. Sylveon actually appreciates being burned because that will actually, well like I said earlier, it's going to nullify the leftovers, but the Akasa Moonblast won't be doing a lot of damage. Well, actually wait, no. Moonblast will do a lot of damage, not physical attackers, because Sylveon, why would you put Play Rough? That would be really weird if Sylveon would learn Play Rough. Anyways, I'm rambling. Y'all get the idea that Sylveon does appreciate being burned, but the left goes. So that's all I'm saying. Now, Jirachi comes in, goes back into a scrap where I do. This is where I know that He's a choice scarf variant. I'm like, oh man, why didn't I see that earlier? But I guess that means that, you know, he gets a choice ban and he's going to do a lot more damage this time around. That was a great play on his part because that uh, did a lot of damage to my scavalier. I missed the Mega Horn. Why would I do that? Come on, a scavalier. You're, you're very strong. I know you want to hit your cast, but I really want you to hit your cast. Fortunately, I do hit this one, and that's crucial, because look at how much I did. I did a lot. Had I hit the first one, that would probably been a lot more easier to deal at this point, because I would have more health, and yeah, you get the idea. But as slow as a scavenger is, I don't think he'll be here for very long anyway, so. Here comes Neo King. And Neo King, I wanted to be safe. I wanted to see if he's going to be a Scarf variant. And I know he's probably going to go for an Earth Power because the Flamethrower is obvious of a move to go for. So I guess that means I was okay. It was okay for me to go for the Death Fogger on Skyboard I made a mistake again by going for an Ice Beam where I should have gone for the Flamethrower. And I was going to go for Flamethrower, but my Gruja gets flinched. That is unfortunate, and I just lose my Gruja just like that. And here I go for a Will Wisp on the Shirachi because it's physically oriented, but I get flinched again. So two Pokemon are down just because of a choice banded Iron Head plus flinches. Isn't that wonderful, guys? 
the hacks. That's all because of hacks. But fortunately, I am faster. I wasn't sure if I would be faster. If she was scarfed, then I would uh, be faster. But now here's a Pokemon that I haven't cat gold this entire fight, and that is his Mega Medicham. Yes, that's unfortunate. Because at this point, the only thing I could, you know, use to counter Mega Medicham would be my Sylveon and my Spiritomb, which Spiritomb is out of the match, right? That kind of gets me into a deep hole at this point, because yes, he has Bullet Punch and that kind of sucks, but if I had Spiritomb, then this would be a whole lot easier. That is unfortunate. Now, I am focused Sash on the Samurott. I have a Mega Alkazam, which you'll see later. Yeah, you see how this strategy works? I get hit by a Zen Headbutt. Yeah, I go for Waterfall, but that's not going to be enough. Like I said earlier, I am going to go for that Mega Evolution. I'm not sure why he went for the Dragonite here. I think he was expecting me to be focused Sash, but my Samurai is. The Samurai that I had was Swords Dance with Waterfall, Aqua Jet, and Night Slash. So, I am forcing him to go for extreme speed, but that means that, yeah, that means that I get hit and I lose my multi scale because I traced it from his Dragonite. But that means that his Mega Mega Jam is going to come in, finish me off with a fake out attack. There you go. That is the battle. I lose yet again this team, though. It's not working out. But that's it, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. Hit that like button, and I'll see you guys later. Bye now.